Testing. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Don't know what happened there, but that sucked. Test. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Don't know what there, but that sucked. Anyway, we're going to flip it on and keep it moving. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, damn. How are we doing? Let me do a sound test real quick. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let me All right, welcome back. Woo! You build it while you fly it, baby. You build it while you fly it. That's why you got to be good at what you do on the, on, the, on the fly because you never know what the French toast is going to happen. You guys um, in the chat room, let me know if the sound is okay. You're buffering? Well, it's not buffering on this end. We got plenty of speed over here. Plenty of speed over here, but that doesn't change anything. All right. What's going on? What's going on? What is going on, man? All right. Power levels. Good. Lighting. Good. Music. Good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention what's going on today, but uh, there have been crazy things happening on the Internet. Um. Yeah. Oh, no. Public chat. No, 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 no. That's another thing. Yeah. We changed that, too. A lot of stuff has been going on on the Internet today. Uh, Facebook and Instagram experienced major outages and issues. So the Internet's been going haywire today. Let's go ahead and hide you out. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so say goodbye to anybody who had something smart to say. Bye-bye. That's why I love leaving stuff on. So when you get people who have a lot, let me go, matter of fact, let's go through the chat room. Let's, for everybody who has, let's see, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. No, I left the, I left the members only chat on uh, leading in uh, because Sometimes you like to see the difference between members and subscribers, and sometimes people just subscribe just to talk shit, and when they do, they, put, they pop their heads up and you just snipe them. Pew! Pew, pew! Pew, pew, pew! Hopefully, enjoy your pew, pew. So, that's that. All right, let's turn that off. And get to the show lights. So, enjoy, Big Shirley Nim. Oh, I'm late to my own show. Well, you don't have to worry about it the next time. You can you can never be said. You can never say anything else. There we go. I'm telling you right now, man. Yeah, some of y'all are gonna learn. You're gonna learn how to act when you get someplace. You're gonna learn how to act when you get someplace. Because unless you are paying. For me to show up on time, you get it when you get it. I find it funny, some folks, oh man, where you gonna be on time? You ain't donated nothing to nothing. You ain't donated nothing to nothing. So, then, oh man, I'm gonna unsubscribe. I mean, no disrespect, you just subscribe to talk shit, so. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. So here we go. Let's make sure everything is up and going before we get started again. Because once I get started, I don't want to stop. 
Uh, and if you had a good weekend, raise oh, your hand. Oh, man, I'm awesome. I had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. Why? Because unlike um, other content creators, I actually get out in the field and do work. Oh, who are my manners? Candle of the evening from from Diptyque Bay and fragrance of the evening. Two bona fide compliment monsters. Prada Lone. Gentlemen, trust me. You want this in your life. Wear this to the office. You would think, you know, Prada does clean fragrances exceptionally well. Prada Lone. Everywhere I wear this, uh, people are stopping me, asking me what I'm wearing. Prada Lone. You can pick that up for like 85 bucks. And then, you know, and of course, the OG banger, Bleu de Chanel, Parfum, man, just, I don't care how much money you spend on fragrances, you got to have these two in your lineup. They're just that damn good. All right. You know what? Let me bring these back in because we've been having a little problem with the focus thing going on. So uh, let's see what's happening right here. Get the likes up, people. Do me a favor. Keep them up over 50%. That's what we're going to do. Ask you to keep the engagement up over 50%. That is not charging. That should be charging now. So, 75%. Why was this weekend so good? This weekend was great because... As I'm out and about in the world, you know, I, I would tell you that if I run into somebody in the out and about, like when I was in New York earlier last week, uh, I took pictures with people. I, I sat down and had and shared a, a, a drink, my drink, with somebody. Um, and I'm willing to sit down and have the conversation. People will tell you if they run into me, often they're probably shocked a couple of things. One, that I'm as tall as I am. Two, that... I am exactly what I say online in person. Um, and I ran into over the weekend when I'm out and about, it is not uncommon for women to ask me, oh my God, is it really you? And I have a question and I'm willing to have the conversation provided I have the time. And if you approach me, uh, with good faith. And one thing that I notice is the difference between how men are moving around in the world and how women are moving around in the world. And the bottom line of it, I call a net net of it is, I said between from now to the end of the year, I am focusing like a laser on women in the 30 to 40 year old range who are on the path to being... I'm a PhD. <laughs> Dying alone. The women I consider to be nice, women that I consider to be nice, modern women. There are plenty of you out there. And when I coined that term, there are so many women I said last week who are, who think they are traditional women. And I am said, no, you're not traditional. You're a nice, modern woman. Meaning, that if you're a traditional woman, traditional women need and require men to be in their lives. Nice, modern women, men have been optional. You may want them, but they're not a necessity. Two very different ways of thinking. So whenever I run into a nice, modern woman, they often tell me the same thing. I was raised in a two-parent household or I have a good relationship with my dad, some version of that. I went to college and or university. I have a bachelor's or master's, a PhD, something. I'm a professional woman. I'm a good looking this, I'm that. And I am single as French toast. Why can't I keep a man? And inevitably, as I listen to all of these stories that these ladies honestly feel like there's some special, like there's special snowflakes, like all their stories are different. And I'm hearing the same through line. I'm hearing the same through line. Winter is coming and you weren't prepared. Winter is coming and you weren't prepared. 
because it only it it amazes me that how in their late 20s or early 30s so many modern women finally decide to want to start to begin to get serious about looking for a man but here's the problem they bring all of the baggage from their past relationships into the present and what have i said making men in your present pay for mistakes of your past equal no future i'm talking about nice attractive women who cannot keep a man of value so as I'm sitting here having a conversation with these women on the women uh, as we hang out a minute, other women are walking by. I talked to at least 20 women in this one in, in this one evening. 20 black women. And I will tell you, some of you, some of uh, some of modern women, <laughs> A big part of the reason why you can't keep a man is because you don't know how to act. I said this on Instagram. Many modern women are socially awkward or act badly. I'll tell the act badly story another day. But the women who are, I want to focus on the women who want a different outcome, but you don't seem to realize that the clock is ticking and you are still carrying modern woman vibes into Wanting to be with somebody because you understand winter is coming. So I need you to understand we are we are officially getting into the <laughs> I'm into the on my Instagram and I'm about to roll it out. Yeah, all you guys have been I've had so many people ask me. You should be a matchmaker. You should be a matchmaker. You should do this. You should do that. And if you recall, at the beginning of the year, I had the prize and the catch. Back in January, December, January, we we're doing the prize and the catch, bringing it back. So yeah, I'm going to that shoot the shot show on on Friday further crystallize the fact that we have so many women who simply do not know how to pick a man, how to talk to a man, how to, to be around the kind and caliber of men they want. So why is this important? Because every time a modern woman strikes out or loses in a relationship, it takes her health meter down. Why is this important? Because ladies, dating is dumb. You're not, human females are not set up to date dozens of men. That is not how your software is written. It's not written for that. Men are of the species, are the ones who are supposed to get out and, and go make ourselves valuable and then deal with rejection. Women today have little to no tolerance for rejection. This has been on full display over the last several months. I cannot tell you how many times a woman may approach me, shoot their shot nice, whether they're being cool, friendly, whatever, and you say, no, thank you. And they, shame, insults, guilt, and need to be right. Hey, can I buy you a drink? Uh, appreciate it. No, thank you. I'm having a good evening. Here comes the asshole in the women. Why? Because you're not supposed to be single in your late 20s, early 30s. Ladies, like it or not, the way we have evolved is you were supposed to be coupled off and with a man before 26. So why is this important? Modern women are tired of being alone they are tired of dating they're tired of starting to get to know somebody and it not work getting this getting that and then what's funny is when they finally fixate or decide out of all the men that they have in their friend zone out of all the guys that they like when they decide the one guy they want to deal with he don't want them tell me i'm lying i know i'm not lying because i've seen this over and over and over again. Have one lady. Well, well, why alone at work? Are you dating with intention? You guys see how I run my show. I ask the same questions in the same format, and I can. You're dealing with men who don't want what you want, and the men who would be suitable for you, they don't turn your crank. And here's the problem: the more a woman loses or has unsuccessful relationships, meaning relationships that do not end in marriage the lower and lower her tolerance becomes. 
This is why you are seeing a spike in, mo in dog moms, in cat moms. This is why we are seeing so many women in their 20s and 30s going out to be get dogs or cats because they won't reject them. They don't have to deal with it. A dog or a cat allows them to sit around and focus on their so-called career and have something to emotionally invest in when there was supposed to be a, a relationship there. And then when they decide, well, okay, life has stopped spinning enough. Let me start dating. Then they realize, I don't know how to do this. And all women see is the next 30 to 40 to 50 years alone. Winter is coming. So when you come on to this program and I'm one of the first people that sit back and tell you, uh, pay attention. I have many women sitting back and say, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of dating. I want everybody, I'm not going to play the song, but if you've ever heard the, the R&B classic, Al Green, I'm so tired of being alone. I'm so tired on my own. So many women are so tired of being alone. And it is written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. So many of you, you're out with your girlfriends. You're out individually. Women today are eating themselves. They're eating. What, why, you're seeing modern women who are unhappy. They're eating their feelings. This is why you see women who weigh more than men. Those are not happy women. This is why you see women who are caked up, made up, hair, this, such and so forth. Uh, 30 years ago, you would have had drag queens or, or men dressing up trying to be women wearing all this aftermarket equipment. Those are not happy women. Then you see women who are working 60, 70, 80 hours a week in a job. Those are not happy women. They're not. Women today are not happy. And they go to one another and they sit around and fill each other's heads with these delusions and fantasies. I'm miserable, girl. I'm miserable, too. Let's go high girl summer. Let's go have a drink and so forth. And all of them are doing the same thing. Getting home, looking at their dog or their cat, crying in their pillow, got to get up at five o'clock the next morning to start this shit all over again. And all that's looking forward at you is Fannie Mae or Sally Mae, uh, hundreds of thousands, high five figures, high five figures, six figures of college debt to where you can't stop working, high consumer debt. And, and this is what modern women are walking into the dating environment with ghosts of boyfriends past, alpha widow, in debt, depressed, anxious, in need of therapy. All of these things. How many times have I talked about dating place trauma? And ladies, you go into the open dating market like this. And just because you drove yourself through the car wash and you got a, a, a spray on wax doesn't mean that you are road worthy. God damn it. Just because you went to the local car wash and got one, you got, I'm going to get the manager special. You didn't even spring for the detailer and the manager special. You want to look like a new car, but you drive like a rental because soon as you get into a relationship here come all my rules and my standards my games my this my that modern women the first thing you start doing is you get into dating and you start playing goddamn games because that's what you know it's almost you're like on autopilot and you can tell this is going to end in that time frame ladies are you tired yet are you tired are you tired then you go run to other places, men who keep telling you, ain't no problem, the problems are men. Running to women, girl, ain't no problem with him. They, they, these guys need to get their If you're a queen, mother, see moss go. Are you tired yet, ladies? Are you tired? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not me, you don't.
<clears throat> I work too damn hard. I sacrifice too damn much for this, for y'all not to me to hit the damn like button. Forget that. Nope, 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 nope. It's in the game. <clears throat> I mean, folks, I mean, I'm be honest. This is not a game. Okay? I spend a lot of time. I never really talk about what this costs me. Because I'm doing the work. When I leave my house... At any at some point in time, somebody wants something. Every day I wake up to thousands of emails and messages. And I accept it all. But I'm going to require that you at least hit the damn like button. I find it professionally offensive that I have to keep asking you guys to do that. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start shutting the chat room off until the likes are over 70%. Or we just want to have a chat room. Now, what size is that? You know what? And I've said that too. I'm tired of you guys doing these running on running gags. Hat size, bonnet size, light size, car size, French toe size. If I look over and see this shit, I'm just going to start cutting the chat room off. I've asked nicely. Look, we have to have some sort of decorum because I am, this is work. I was out with people until 3 o'clock in the morning trying to help people with giving of myself. And I asked for this. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me, feel pity, but all I'm asking is to do the minimum. Please, and at least ensure that this work gets out to people by hitting the like button, hitting the share, share it. Stop just coming to get what it is you want. That's part of the problem today in our modern dating environment. Men are going into to what they want. Women are going into it for what they want. No one is caring about the other person. Everybody's worried about their goddamn feelings, how they feel, all their issues. Not worried about how they act or impact or what they do and how it impacts other people. Between the sociopaths, the narcissists, the borderline people, you got high value, want to be high value men and mo nice modern women and we all act badly. No one wants to be hurt. Everybody's playing games. Blue pill, red pill, this, that. No one knows how to have an honest goddamn conversation and say, you know what, I'm scared. I don't know how to do this. I didn't learn how to do it. But at the end of the day, why don't you take it into the marketplace, those tears you cry in your pillow, the tears you cry in your shower, and take that level of vulnerability and honesty out into the real world, and then maybe, just maybe, you might find somebody willing to give you half a chance. Instead of always acting like you got your shit together when you don't. Instead of acting like you got the keys to the universe when you don't. We are all broken. We are all flawed. Men and women alike. You don't like how women are acting. I talk to many men who sit around. You don't talk a good game. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be on my, oh, she ghosted me. She did this. She did that. Uh, dudes pull me to the side too. I want to run out. My, my baby mama doing this. I'm like... Have you tried to be nice to her? Have you tried to accept some accountability and ownership? What? Modern women, I don't do this to humiliate you. What I do this is to help you get out of your way because as I was talking to this, these young women, 
True to form. Who did I interact with? I interacted with the, the loud ass bitter chicks who couldn't get their way and ended up having to get kicked out of a situation or get, ended up having to be asked to leave the situation alone. Ended up talking to, here comes some older women. Oh, or is this your group or so-and-so? And I'm looking, and they're like, what's going on? Oh, she's mad because life is over for her. And because a man my age can still command attention and respect from young, attractive women because they don't know how to act towards us. Women, you don't know how to act towards men. And more so than the men, ladies, this is what you need to understand. Right, wrong, and indifferent. You got to get this stuff figured out first. Because you can't wait for the men to meet you halfway or they got to or they got to get fixed because the black community is no longer isolated. It is fully integrated. Becky Marisol Myling and Jamila are coming for black men. And you can sit around coming. and saying, well, like when I asked that one 24 year old girl, uh, if, you, if black women decided to give black men what black men said they want, would black men marry them? She said, yes, but do we get what we want? You don't get that choice because it's not like you have somebody rushing to marry you in mass outside of this. Everyone's tired of the modern dating environment, but ladies, it is you that bears the burden of having to do something different whether it's your responsibility or not, you didn't create the situation, doesn't matter. Your, your mothers, and your grandmothers, and your nanas, and your aunties, and them, they created the situation, and I'm sorry, sins of the mother. You ladies are going to have to learn how to move in this environment to at least have a shot at getting one. Because right now, what you're good at doing is dating, hooking up casual stuff, but you cannot keep. What made me start thinking about this? On Instagram, I was talking about this. Um, I was talking to this one sister. You know, tall sister, nice. And I could tell, she, of the three women, one was really kind of fear-driven. One was kind of, she was, too, she, she, was in her, she was doing her thing. And this other sister, who seemed like she was doing the work. But all of it was a little bit of the puzzle. And they said, well, Ultimately, it came down and said, well, where do we go to find these men? And I'm like, just keep asking the wrong question. You don't go anywhere to find these men. You become what these men want and they will find you if you make yourself available. But when I asked, do you go out to this place or that place? No, I go out around my house. I do this. So you want the kind of man you want to be found by you. And ultimately, I said, why is it? And this is a black question. Why is it the black women feel like landing a man of value should be free? I said this on Instagram. In our community, I said, go find a matchmaker. And when I sat down and met, met, met with some local matchmakers over the last several months, they would tell you, well, we don't have a lot of black clients because black people don't use matchmakers. And you know what? She's right. Black people, we don't use matchmakers. Just like I talked about Renegent, Renabay. Black women, I told you Obsidian two years ago, the black women would not use Renegent because black women feel like black men should be free. Especially, they feel like the higher value black men should be free. Not only should they be free, those men should break themselves and do something to prove to these women that they are worthy of being these women's boyfriends. When every other group of women knows that the higher up a man is, the more you got to prove to him you're worthy of his last name. So, asking black women to go to a matchmaker non-starter asking black men to go to a matchmaker damn near a non-starter too because black men i'm gonna say this for you you think that quality women should be free as well that you should be able to get it up off the lip or off a game 
listen to me and listen to me well, black America. Mating costs money. High quality partners cost thousands of thousands of dollars. And there are no goddamn guarantees. This is why the singles environment in the, in the world in general, the black community in particular, is trash. No one wants to market or sell to a group of people who feels like that I should just have to get dressed up and I'll just sit up here and, and wait for the men to come break themselves for me. And then the guys want to not pay no money to come in and spend no money. Everybody's trying to get do the minimum. I know I ain't, I'm, I'm talking, I know the first time you went to a non-black club, y'all was shocked that the air conditioning worked and the, and the music was working and people was buying drinks. The first time somebody bought a round of drinks, you were like, what the fuck? Because what we do is we're getting drunk in the parking lot. Mating is not free, black America. It costs money. Especially you want these so-called high value men. Well, guess what, ladies? Fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, childless. That's the minimum. That's to get in. So whether you like the fitness scale or the BMI or waist to hip ratio, it don't matter. You still must be height, weight appropriate, weigh less than him. I'm going there. That's number one. And number two, if you think that high value, in particular black men, should be free, you might as well carry your ass on, get a dog, cat, or leave somewhere else. Because Becky, Marisol, Mylene, Jamila, they're coming after them. Because when these brothers sign up for the... Matchmaking agencies, you know who they're putting in front of them? Blonde hair, blue eyes. Filipino. Latina. Indian. Yeah, that's what they're putting in front of them because you can't, because when I sit down and talk to matchmakers, what percentage of your African-American female clients are fit? Of the ones that are fit, how many are childless? Of the, of the ones that are fit, how many are childless? Hmm? Of the ones that are fit, how many are childless? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So how many fit, childless women do you have in the African community? African American community? Kevin, god damn it. How many fit, childless women in the African-American community who want black men? Because it tends to be when they're going to matchmakers, they're not going to find black men. <laughs> so we're, we're blowing the lid off this motherfucker tonight. We're blowing it all off. This is why y'all are tired. Because we're going into the dating environment in bad form. Women are going out with, with negative on their mind. Men are going out with cheap on their brain. Everybody's going into it. Well, I would, I would use a matchmaker, except there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees in mating and dating. Just admit, you're too cheap. And then when you say, okay, if you did get the matches, could you close the deal? Hmm. If you got the matches, could you close the deal? And that's the, therein lies the rub. Because being able to go out on a date is one thing with the man of value. But if you are not what he picks up, uh, so I'm going to shout, I'm not going to say her name, but we all remember the, the, the former matchmaker who said she stopped dating stop doing matchmaking because she couldn't deal with female clients. Remember her name, right? Wink, wink, wink. We're not going to say your name because I don't want your name tied to me. But you can go look on the video. It's still here. The women don't really want to be married. They want this list of criteria. It ain't changed. It's that and worse. Because women don't want to go spend $10,000 to get five matches and then the matches not be on her. He's not attractive, but he's got... He, what do y'all, especially in our community, you want to be a certain height, he needs to look, look good, and he got to be a sexual professional. <laughs> you're tired of the modern dating environment because you're going into the modern dating environment with a hookup mindset. 
That's right. You're going into the modern dating environment wanting a long-term outcome with a hookup mindset. You're picking somebody that should be good enough to screw instead of good enough to, to, to go with for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So, are you tired of it yet? Because this is a dating environment, ladies. I asked on my Patreon, would you hire a matchmaker? Would you hire a matchmaker? And I asked people to be honest. And most people wouldn't hire a matchmaker. Because there are no guarantees. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about this. If you want guarantees, gentlemen, buy a dog and die alone. If you want guarantees, ladies, buy a cat and die alone. If you want guarantees, ladies and gentlemen, buy a pet and die alone. Exit the dating market and leave it to the people who are willing to risk. People wanting guarantees before they do something don't need to be dating. This is why when you often ask a woman, Fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive. I don't mind being cooperative, submissive, or feminine for the right men. Leave the dating market. Conditional femininity, chameleons, whatever you want to call it, do not have a place in the dating market with people who are trying to get real long-term outcomes. Why is this important? Because many of you ladies honestly think that the problem is the men. And the problem isn't so much the men. The problem is the fact that many of you have not sat down with the, with the professional and worked out the issues that you've had from your previous relationships. Again, I, spent, I talked to one lady. I'm like, all I've heard from you about men is negative all night. Have you ever had a good relationship with men? Yeah, I have. Okay, let's talk about it. Always ask, what consumes your thoughts controls your life, ladies? And if every time you bring up men, it's negative, it's them doing something to you, stop being the victim queen. Take ownership and accountability that you chose what you chose and you decided to stay with somebody who wasn't trying to marry you. Oh, maybe, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do know this. I do know this. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Uh, Allegiant Six came, came through with a 300 shot. You know, I am, I am dead ass serious about this. Um, this virtual matchmaker stuff. People have been asking me for the longest, and I've been kind of resistant, but no, I mentioned on Instagram, and I'm like, you know what? Instagram would probably be the place I would do it, uh, but I'm going to find men from here and women from Instagram, and I'm going to start doing beta tests and conduct uh, impromptu, you know, <clears throat> a, a first date long distance. Here's Brad from over here, and here's Becky from over there. In other words, we have to figure out a way to get people who want to be something other than scared in the, around one another. So I'm going to tell you what I told these women. I told them, first thing you need to do is you all need to have, if you're serious, you need to go get a mental checkup. Well, I'm in therapy. If you've been in therapy for two or three years, you need to fire your therapist and get somebody who's going to set you straight. Not going to collar your feelings. But let's fast forward. Let's presume that you've got your head right. Let's presume that you're fit, feminine, friendly, submissive, fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, childless, single. Then you got to put yourself out on the marketplace. What did I tell these women? Same thing I told you. You need to go out. You, I don't need to be going out with a group. You need to go out by yourself. I got to go by myself. Buy a dog and die alone. If every time I tell you you need to do something, it's like, I don't want to do that. Buy a dog and die alone. Go out by yourself and leave your phone in the car. Sit at the bar by yourself without this thing right here. No pacifier or safety blanket. Everything that I said on Friday, right? Remember? And I asked these women, have you ever shot, shot your shot at a man? And I said, would you ever shoot your shot? 
And of course, and to the woman, none of them had. And even trying to role play, it was awkward as hell. All three of them attractive. The two that walked by, beautiful. I mean, most of the women were very good looking. And I'm just like, but God damn. Socially awkward. So why is this important? You ladies need to understand how bad it's gotten for you. To understand how far you have to go and how little time you have. You don't have time to be worried about uh, what your friends think. You don't have time to be worried about being called a pick me or a pick me show, whatever. You don't have time. You don't have time. Danger zone. You don't have time. You need to start trying to get a man like your life depends on it because it does, ladies. Understand something. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. The things that are about to start happening are real. And if you think you can sit around in hot girl summer and just uh, short term hook up through another year, all you're doing is accruing more psychological damage. Let me also say this to you, gentlemen. Understand something. I've had to say this to guys before. I'm going to tell you, too. Uh, if you're dating and have a rotation of women, understand she probably has a rotation of men, too. Understand something. This is why I love alpha male strategies. His little tagline, they are all blank. You better keep that in the top of your mind because understand something. Once you start dealing, you got to still maintain masculine frame and do what you have to do and realize that, gentlemen, don't fall for the okie doke. If she's not sleeping with you, she's sleeping with somebody else. And ladies, vice versa. If you ain't giving it up to him, he's getting it from somewhere else. You would be amazed at how many people really are out here believing this 30, 60, 90 day crap and believe in, and, and believe that people believe their stories. And I say one thing, turn down the volume on all human beings and see how they act. That's who they are. All right, we're going to open up the call line. We're going to open up the call line because I want to hear from the ladies. Are you tired of being alone? Are you tired of this dating crap? Are you tired of going, of, of, of going the way of the dodo? Because ladies, it's not working. What you ladies are doing is simply not working. Zip zero, stingy with De Niro. It is not working. And if you are, and if you're going into the dating marketplace, and listen to what I'm about to say, if you're going into the dating marketplace, fear, scarcity, lack, anxious, anxiety, whatever, get some therapy. Because we shouldn't even call it dating. We should change the name to risk. So the show I think I'm going to call the show, here's what I think I'm going to call the show, the virtual matchmaking. You know what I'm going to call it? The show's going to be called, y'all ready for the show? Y'all ready for the show title? Y'all ready for the show title? The show title is, the matchmaking show is going to be called, Hey Big Head. So when the ladies come in, you ready to play Hey Big Head? She got to come in and say, yeah. Ready to play Hey Big Head? Uh, I'm ready to play Hey Big Head. Ladies, get ready to play Hey Big Head. So when I do the show, I'm going to let you know. Ladies, are you ready to play Hey Big Head? Hey Big Head. Ladies, are you ready to play Hey Big Head? Hey Big Head. Ladies, are you ready to play Hey Big Head? Hey Big Head. All right, Hey Big Head, shoot the shot. Then I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to talk to him. And there was a show called The Dating Game where a woman would sit down and be Three guys on the opposite side of a, of a thing that they couldn't see. And the, the moderator would kind of moderate it. See, it's funny. In the black community, we think that dating and, and, and stuff like this is like every other group makes it fun. Every other group makes dating fun. In, our, in the black community, dating is horrible. You'd rather have a root canal or a proctology exam than fucking date in the black community. When was the last time you ladies looked forward to a date? Gentlemen, when was the last time you looked forward to a date? We don't like dating. So we're going to have to make it fun. So how are we going to make it fun? Hey, big head. Hey, big head. How you doing? We got a 27-year-old from, what was that chick that was on the other day? Uh, from down there from Orlando. Hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, got a 27-year-old girl from Orlando. You ready to play Hey, big head? Okay. Hey, big head. 
Hey, hey, big head. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Godfather. I got a lot of men who desire me, but they're not really interested in me seriously. Why, why do you think it is? Well, I got some ideas. Like, well, what, what do you want seriously? Uh, well, uh, 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 okay, we got to figure it out. I already got a candidate. One, two, three. Ask them some questions. You want your date with candidate three? Come on, candidate three. You got this girl. All right, lady, shoot your shot. You ready to play Hey, Big Head? All right, 27-year-old, shoot your shot at number three. That's a show. You heard it. Going to set the place on fire because I am tired of us not seeing this stuff. So if we got to do it in public in front of everybody and you got to have a virtual match make done in public in the real world. So if we can learn how to do this better, that's what the fuck we going to do. And if you're going to be on, if you want to get a better outcome, you're going to have to grab your ovaries. You're going to have to grab your balls and we're going to have to try to do something different because this shit ain't working. Hey, big head, ready to shoot your shot? Ooh, watch him get mad. They're going to get mad. Who he think he is? Who he think he is? He can't be a math maker. Who he think he is? Oh, man. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to, I've already, got, I've already made more matches than most of these so-called people who do this stuff already, and I don't even do it. I got more people who claim to get, be getting relationships and getting married than the people who claim to do this for real. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 just facts. Because unlike those places, over here is a platform for men. See, you got men over here. Over there, they got opinions. Over here, we can generate outcomes. So, gentlemen, you know your godfather's on your side. I'm doing my best possible to put like-minded women, like-minded men in the same place and let nature take its course. Um, oh, and I reserve the right to charge for this. Oh, you're goddamn right. Matchmaking is not free. And if I'm going to take all these hits and bumps, oh, yes. I want to get paid, but if you want to get on the ground floor, be part of the beta test, come on. I mentioned all this on Instagram. You want to get on on the low end, on the, on the bottom floor, so-and-so, but mm-hmm. And don't be surprised if this doesn't go from here and end up on Patreon and the family, because here's the thing. If you're not willing to pay for it, if you ain't willing to pay five bucks, ten bucks to be a patron to get this done, you ain't really serious. If you want dating for free, take your ass out there. I got nothing for you. On this side of the table, we know that beauty costs and men of value are worth an investment. It costs both people up front, consistently, and ongoing. Let me say that again. Beauty costs and men of value are worth an investment up front. And both people understand that they're going to have to invest up front, ongoing, and consistently. If you're not willing to do that, kick freaking rocks. I don't want to talk to you. If you want to come in and try to manipulate and try to play conditional femininity and I'll just get him and think you're going to sit your feet up somewhere after you got the bag, I'll sniff you out quickly too. And if you come over here with some game or whatever, I'm going to have, I, remember that don't date him sis? That don't date him sis? Yeah. For everybody we find out playing games over here, running game, we're going to have, a, we're going to have a, uh, the most wanted. Here's the FBI. Here's the least wanted FBI. Here's Ashley. Yeah, Ashley was on uh, Show uh, 14, and she said something and so forth. Yeah, she went out with Roger, and went out with Roger. Next thing you know, she's over on this, and she's over on that. Roger, tell me what happened. Yeah, man, I went out with Ashley. Next thing you know, she was trying to give me to pay her rent, and this, and that, and her baby dad. And that. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to, well, yeah, yes. No games. If that bothers you, stay, stay, stay out there. See, that's the level of transparency and the level of risk you're going to have to have. So you better come through the door the way you want to exit the door. Pioneering the game. That's goddamn right. Hmm. Coochie Debt website. Thank you. Uh, yeah. How many, how many of you ladies out there? Yeah. yeah. Ladies, some of y'all have overdue coochie balances. And it is fall time. It is time to start paying out this coochie. 
You have been collecting coochie. Dudes got coochie coupons they need to redeem. And y'all need to learn how to be like, oop, I messed up. Let me make this. I, I, I should have did something and so forth. I'm going to just go ahead. Come on, ladies. You want to win. Start redeeming some of them coochie coupons. Y'all don't remember the in progress. Y'all don't remember the coochie coupons? Yes. We're not doing any of that platonic. Not we're going to save ourselves till marriage shit either. No. These relationships are going to be grown damn relationships. The expectation is people are going to actually have relationships, sex, and figure if they decide long term. We're not over here to try to hook up. So if you're just trying to get laid, eh, that ain't going to be your spot either. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right, goddammit. it. Coochie coupon, that's right. See, when you start putting this stuff out front, you start letting folks know we're not going to tolerate with the hustle or the games on either side, then you can start getting something that's going to be worth something. So you can't do that online, but I can do it over here, damn it. Can you imagine being the, the chick that came over here trying to run game and then she get called out for being a, 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 a coochie scammer? She, try, she a date scammer? Oh, my God. She get called out for date scamming? Oh, boy, that would be horrible. <laughs> oh, beta test idea in the, in the work. So, hey, that's the idea. We'll see how it goes. Just like this show. Hey, man, we'll see how it goes. This show started off when I, the, the forerunner to this show was when I did the show with uh, the young lion, and we did the lion's den. Uh, I will say this. I'm always trying to come up with ideas to keep this fresh and relevant. And like I said, <clears throat> I always come up with ideas how to keep this fresh and relevant. And I make no bones about it. I want to get insanely rich doing what doing this. But I want to get there by helping people get what they want. And I will get what I want along the way. That's why you don't see me with any courses. Nothing wrong with that. T-shirts, books, or nothing wrong with it. I will have all this stuff too. I reserve the right to monetize anything that I do and anything that's, that's valuable. If you want to participate, it's going to cost you. Men, it's going to cost to get involved. Women, it's going to cost to get involved. And if you don't want to, fine. Enjoy. We're still going to get it figured out. But anyway, let's talk about it. Money It's called a waste. It's a waste. This is where the collarbones will be. This is a waste. Hip to waist ratio, you take an inch above the waist and you measure. And you take the circumference of the hip and divide your height. Divide your waist by your height. And there's a chart. 
Oh yeah, I make this shit look good. That's right, I'm a tall. This is a fireplace, by the way. The fuel will be here tomorrow. PhD. Don't get jealous. She just, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, you still got a girl on girl. Okay. Your, your fat ass. Girl, I like that. I like that shit. Ah, get you a Chanel, girl, guys. Get you a Chanel, girl. That's Chanel and that's Muse. <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm going to go to hell. <laughs> I'm going to go to hell. Oh, y'all are sick. You guys are just encouraging this shit. Kevin, god damn it. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys. Kay, did you see that? We got a little, the little, little booties is in this season. Little booties is in. All right, you got to get on the camera though. You can't, you cannot be, look, on the Zoom, you got to be on camera. That, don't, that shit don't work. Okay, go ahead. And here's the thing. Shout out to the PhDs. Let me say something I said to the sisters also. I only date women who are educated. I date women who are bachelors, masters, MBA, PhD. I love an intelligent woman. But here's the problem why the PhD, the PhD thing was there because that woman put a PhD over a relationship. That was the problem, not the fact she has a PhD. Hello? Hi. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? I am well. So are you tired of all this? I am very tired. How old are you? I'm 26. 26? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how can I help you? Well, I was wondering because I'm willing to get on a man's program and I'm willing to commit and compete, but I'm thinking like, should I lower my standards or not? Or if my standards are too high? Well, what do you want? Um, I just really just want a good man, to be honest. Nah, that's bullshit. But like that's bu when that's, bu that's bullshit. <laughs> no, that all I just honest. want a good man. How okay? How old are you? Twenty six. Mm-hmm. Did you go to college? Yes. Or right, what's your degree in? Education. Ooh. And I'm getting my master's in uh, psychology right now. Lord have mercy, Jesus, you psych chicks. <laughs> um, all right, do you want children? Yes. How many would you like to have? One. The psychology on that's not good. Don't do just one. Well, I feel like one is all I can really like afford and take care of. And if my husband want more, he'll just have to be able to afford more. If that makes sense. No, it doesn't. You said it does it? No. <laughs> well, I'm well, to, well but, but, but explain it. I'm trying to understand why that makes sense. What are you talking about? Because I think that with my salary and my plans, I will only be able to really afford one kid, like just with just me. But if my husband want more kids. Wait, wait um, a minute. Okay, dear, when I'm asking, do you want children? I'm talking about in the context of a marriage, not being a baby mama. Yeah, no, I know, but I just, you just okay. always want to be, you always just want to be careful. No, I don't understand. Okay. So explain to me, what are you talking about? Because you say, well, how we got here is you say you want a good man. Mm -hmm. All right. But you're going to get your degree in education. You want to get a master's in psychology to do what? To be a therapist, a counseling psychologist. Uh-huh. And... So you can only afford one child. Mm-hmm. How much is a well, counseling? Just, how much is a counseling? How much is a counseling therapist make? In Missouri, like mm, between six thousand, seventy thousand. 
60 or 70? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you do know that the average four parent, four four person family in this country earns around fifty two thousand dollars combined, right? I didn't know that. So, but, um, number one, having one kid is, is kind of selfish. I grew up as only child, only child syndrome is a thing. But so, as we keep on moving on. How much, how, uh, do you want your husband to be college educated? Um, well, it doesn't do matter if he is or not, if he just have a good income. What's a good income? Um, I would say 60, 70. 60 or 70. Mm -hmm. You care if he's black or not? Oh, yes. I would like to marry a black man. Uh-huh. Uh, what percentage of black men earn more than $75,000? Um, I would say like 15, 20%. Right. 15. So you automatically want men closer to the top 20% of income earners. Mm -hmm. All right. So if he's earning $70,000 a year and you're earning $70,000 a year, why is that one kid? Well, it's no guarantee that he will, it's no guarantee that he will, the man that I meet and, you know, want to be with is going to make that much. And so with me, I just want to make sure that I'm able to afford the kids. Y'all hear why I'm doing this? The first word out of her mouth is how many times did I say guarantees? Buy a dog, lady. If you watch what I should, what I did, what what guarantees are there in love and relationships? None. Then why don't you even bring that up? But I was saying there's no guarantees. So like, just as far as like kids, I just want to make sure that if anything happened, I have a stable and secure household for my kid if anything happens for to your my kid you, okay your kid your kid your money your income ma'am you talk like a single woman no offense but that's how you talk you talk like a single woman your kid your money your this or that worst case scenario fear i think this is a good starting phone call because this is what you're kind of typical of what's going on out here College educated black women running around with fear, scarcity, and lack, thinking like independent women. And then wanting then wanting a man. No. Yeah. If a man's just gonna get one kid out of you, then why does he need you? Well, I did say if he want more, I just wanna make sure that he's uh -huh. able that we're able to that, No, no, more. that we're able, no, that he's able to. That's what you said, he's able to. So let's do this. What percentage of the over, overall family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for for an entire lifetime? 40%. 40%. So that means you want to have to work until age 65 retirement. Mm -hmm. All right. So, ma'am, if that's truly the case, then having more than one child should not be an issue because you're going to be working. Well, maybe my plans are based out of fear of me just trying to be careful with decisions that I make. What decision is that? Like just as far as kids, just as far as having multiple children, I just want to make sure that I'm able to give them the household and the lifestyle. I'm that, able to. That, yeah. Yeah, that we are able to. I'm single right now, so I have... Like but I'm I want you to understand. But I want you to understand mind. that you're going into. But I want you to understand you're taking this mind into psychology. So let me explain this too. This is why we need to be. When I keep saying therapy, I want you ladies to go sit down with a male therapist because I'm going to tell you my personal experience in our community. We have far the the especially in our community. I can speak to that. I find more black women who are in psychiatry, psychology, whose personal lives are just 
they may be competent counselors, but their personal. But you take this into the world. Mm. And if you want to be someone's therapist, that's why a lot of therapists dislike me because I hold a mirror up to them. I'm like, uh. So if you're going to be working until 65, making $70,000 a year, and your husband's making, even if he's making average money, you can't afford more than one kid? Well, I probably, I probably can. I'm open to having more kids. I just wanna, just wanna make sure that we. But both see, can. no, see, and that's the problem. You're coming in negative, and I'm gonna tell you, men are tired of dealing with women who have this negative mindset. You ladies come in with fear. It's not fun dating y'all. It's not enjoyable. It's all uh, you always. Uh, 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 I mean, have you ever gone out with somebody who's just worried about everything? Somebody, I don't want to, I can't stay out too late. We can't speed. We can't do this. Can't do that. We got. Have you, have you ever gone out with somebody like that? Hung out with a, huh? <laughs> I kind of like that, I guess. So I right. see now. I'm just saying that you guys got to make it fun to date, to be with you. Yes, yeah, great that you want to be deliberate about ch- child rearing, but it's not being deliberate, ma'am. It's about fear. And everything, the things you said was all coming from a single woman. But actually, the way you talk is, the way you were talking is like, well, I got to do this based upon the fact that relationships might not work out, so I got to be able to take care of it if it don't. That's really how you're coming at this shit. Let's be real. Yeah. All right, then stay, then bye, dog. If that's how you're going to come at it, stay out of the dating market, buy a dog. I'm dead serious. Cause I'm, and I'm saying this for the benefit of the men. Men would be better off if you ladies would stay out of the dating market if you're not going to really be in it. If you're not going to come into the dating market with good faith, uh, um, courage instead of fear, abundance, Instead of uh, instead of scarcity, and overflow instead of lack. Uh, hello, Jen. Hello, I'm here. Okay. Hold on, I can't I can't do anything with this noise out there. That's, there's a fire department not too far from me. They just decide to. Ah damn! I need to give me a rocket launcher and shoot these motherfuckers off the balcony. Boom! Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, how old are you? I'm 24. Lord have mercy, Jesus. All right, go ahead. What do you got for me? I'm sorry, this got me all off. So are you, are you, are you tired at 24? Uh, yeah, I do. I feel tired. Uh, why? Um, cause I guess I'm not sure to like how to go about dating. Like it's, yeah, it's kind of difficult. All right. Well, I don't know what that means. So you're going to have to give me more than that. Um, I guess probably because I, I don't really go out. I, I don't really go out much. I just work and. Okay. I'm not sure how to meet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how to meet. Like, so you don't go out. What I mean, city do you live in? I live in Wisconsin. What city do you live in? Milwaukee. Did you call in last week? Did I call in last week? Did you no. call in last week? Okay, then how do you expect to get? How do you expect to date if you don't go out? Logistically, I don't know. how do you ladies expect to get found if you're not on the menu? So let let the black man pick white women. Okay. So every black man who's in her area, just go ahead and get a get, get a white woman because she ain't outside. And you and you gonna and when you see when you see Tyrone with Becky, you're gonna smile and say, "Good for you, bro." Right? Right? No. Yeah, you are. No. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You have to. You have to. You have to send them. You have to send them a wedding gift. You got to bake them cookies. You got to congratulate them. You got to babysit their kids. You got to do all that. 
Because you want to see your black brothers happy, right? Right? Yeah, with black right, 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 right. And if, and if you're not there to be picked from, then he can't choose you. So you need to be happy with who he picked because she made herself available. So you need to support that. Right? No. Right? Yes, yes, yes. You said you want to see your black brothers happy, right? You want to see them happy, yes or no? Yes. All right. Then if you're not there to be picked from, he has to pick what's there. And if he picks a white woman, you have to support it because you chose not to be there, right? Right, yeah. Right. So you got to bake them cookies and babysit kids and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Or you could choose to get off your lazy 24-year-old butt and get out there and compete with Becky, Marisol, Marlene, and Jamila. Because if you don't and you end up not getting anything, you can't be mad. Same thing I told the women I was talking to earlier this weekend. Why do y'all feel like you can sit on your ass and a man's supposed to come knock on your door? Being quiet is not going to help. But I'm going to show you why. I'm going to give you why. How tall are you? Um, five, five. Dress size? Uh, like a four. Okay, how often do you work out? Uh, twice a week. Consistently? Consistently, yeah. What do you do on your workouts? What do I do? Uh, I normally, I do, I run, I do like cardio and stuff too. Mm -mm. What are your workout days? What are my workout? It just depends on my off days. No, no, no. No, 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 I don't buy that. I don't believe you. <laughs> it depends on my off day. I have a... <laughs> no, no, I don't believe you. I'm going to tell you why I don't believe you. See, this is where you ladies lose because you're lazy and you lack discipline. And one of the main ways you can tell whether or not a woman's going to be successful in mating and dating and long-term relationship is if she's lazy and undisciplined. As a 24-year-old woman, you don't even have a consistent workout schedule. That means there's a lack of discipline. You're too young to be this apathetic. And in my opinion, I'm going to use the word lazy because it cuts the most. So when you're the men you would want to get with are actively out looking, the marriage minded men, you're not in the places they're going and you're there inconsistently. This is why one of the key tenets to dealing with a woman of value is discipline. You are not a high value woman if you are not living under discipline. High value women are discerning and disciplined. They live under discipline, self-imposed discipline. It is visible, evident, and apparent in their life. There's no question. You can tell a woman that's under some sort of discipline. So you can't get upset. I'm using this as an avatar and a teaching mom. You can't get upset and say you're tired if you're sitting, you know, sitting your ass on the couch. Expecting somebody to come knock on your door and come do what? He's supposed to, so let me get this right. 24 years old, you're tired. Okay, cool. So what what what's what's Keith and uh uh Brian and Tyrone, what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to skip over the women who are out in public shooting their shots at them, trying to holler at them. They're supposed to come over to your neighborhood, your apartment, they're supposed to find you and knock on your door and figure this out. No. And how are, they supposed to, how are they supposed to talk to you? Yeah, I guess I, can, I, guess I have to go out. How, how are they supposed to talk to you? Yeah. How are they supposed to talk to you? I guess I, guess I wonder, like, where, okay. So how, no, no, I, no, 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 no. You haven't answered my question. How are they supposed to talk to you? You need to say, if, thank you. They, you need to say it. You ladies are going to have to get used to confessing because confession is good for your soul. And when you guys say it, you can't act like you don't know it. You ladies are going to have to get good with confessing. You guys will sit there and have the truth. But if that's pride, they won't let that come out of your mouth. And pride goes before the fall, ladies. You've got to get this out. They can't find me because I'm not available.
So now when this call is over, you know, if I'm sitting in the house unavailable, I can't get mad if I'm not picked. Now we can get on to the next part. All right, you don't thank know you. what? You don't know where to go find them? Where? Uh, in the places you're not going consistently, the gym. Good place. There's no way at 24 years old, uh, you're in, in great enough shape to just be working out twice a week. I have a good diet, Kevin. Shame, insults, guilt, the need to be right. I want you guys to understand that all that work came down to, I got a good diet. You're fucking lazy. And you're getting by on being lazy. I don't care how good your diet is. So that was the wrong thing to say, young lady. The right thing to say is, you know what, you're right. I do need to make myself out here. But we've gotten to a place to where you ladies can excuse your bad behavior or your ineffectiveness because right now, you're still a dress size four. Doesn't matter. I don't care how good your diet is. Show me your dating life. That's how we judge. Show me the men of value that are effect actively vetting you right now to be their wife. That's how we judge. That's how every other group judges. That is why it is so important to apply consistent pressure to women because you guys will slip through the cracks if left to your own devices like this. There's nobody to pressure you. And, you, and without pressure, fine, you don't have the discipline to do it then that's cool. Then how are you going to get the outcome you say you want? Yeah, yeah you have a point. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not that's working towards it. So to my critics and detractors who, don't, who seem to think you're always mean and too harsh, no, there's a reason. There's a reason because ladies have to hear these things. Unmute yourself, Christine. Hello? Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am well. How old are you? 26. Could I not be on camera? Mm, security reasons? Something like that. What, I don't know. What, what's the... Okay. Are you it's fine. Single, are you single or married? Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of so many people always asking not to be on camera because that's part of the show. So how old are you? 26? Any kids? No kids. Uh, single, married, what? Single. All right. What What do you got for me? What are we, What's going on with you? Well, I just called in because the topic are modern women tired of being alone. I think absolutely. I know me. I'm tired of being alone. Um, mm -hmm. I think I've gotten to a point where it's just like, you know, you talk a lot about how women who are bigger, plus size women, how you know men have no problem having sex with them, but they're not marrying them. And I feel like I'm kind of at that point. You're 26, you're too tired, you're too young to be this tired. Yeah, but I feel like, I don't know, I just feel tired. Like, I'm like, where, where's the, like, my person? In the gym? In the vegetable aisle? Drinking juice and detoxing? Drinking water, doing Pilates, CrossFit. Yeah. That's true. I started yep. working out a month ago, so I'm trying to like you know start this new health journey. So. How tall are you? Five ten. Dress size. Eighteen. When was the last time you were a healthy weight? Um, I've been pretty much the big, like bigger my whole life, so I don't think I've ever been like completely fit. When was the last time you were a dress size six? Um, probably. 
probably in high school. What grade? Like 10th grade. Are you saying that definitively or are you just saying that? I think I think 10th grade, I would say sophomore year. So if you were 10th, so in 10th grade, you were 15, 16 years old. 200 years ago, you would have been a wife by that time. Mm. So you haven't always been a bigger woman. If you remember, 10 years ago, you were a healthy weight. So I'm just going to shoot straight down the line. When you ladies allow yourself to get to this, this size, you put yourself in the category of being uh, short term at best. Short term meaning like hook up, only limited to what hooking up or? Yes. I mean, I feel like I see women who are plus size, you would say, who are married, but I mean, I, you wouldn't, I guess, they're more Be so quiet. This is the problem. Right there. This is the problem. As nice as I was, as politically correct as I was, here comes the same mother flipping excuse. Yeah, but I feel like show me black women who are five foot ten, almost a dress size twenty, getting married. It's not. It's not common. Then it's why not? not then you should have stopped when I said what I said. But there goes the defense mechanism. Ah, uh, I feel like I see. How does that help you? It doesn't help. I was watching one of your shows and you mentioned once a lot of black women, we go to college, that's when we first like get exposed. I, I, okay, I, I'm, I'm, that's general. Yeah. You, you, did you graduate from college? Yes. What's your degree in? Criminology. I don't want to use criminal justice. God damn. Communications, criminal justice, psychology, sociology. Oh. Whew. They just, it's like, here's a black women degree program. Here you go, nursing. All right, so you went to school. So did you go to an HBCU or a predominantly white institution? Predominantly white. So when you went to college, you saw the freshman women who were non black were nowhere close to your size. Nope. And you did nothing about it. I did, but I fell off. I could admit no, that. No, you did nothing about it because if you did it, you'd have stayed. You said yeah. the last time you were a healthy dress size was in 10th grade. So you did nothing about it. So it's not a matter of we go to college and get whatever. You can go to college and see what the French toast you want. You saw girls getting up eating salads or going to the gym, but just like so many other black women, you decide to go get the Twinkies and the Ho-Hos and the Hot Funyuns and laugh at those women. It's not a matter of knowledge. It's a matter of discipline. See, we could say knowledge and hold that back if black women were not so educated. You know everything. It's the fact of doing anything. And why am I being so hard on this point? Because when you get right down to it, I said, I have noticed a correlation, not a causation, that with the increase in weight in our women, the decrease in marital rate. Because you ladies need to understand something. Psychologically, a larger body mass presents as masculine to the male psyche. Women today present more like men from a, from a physical standpoint. Your voices are getting deeper, more husky. Your, your attitudes are becoming more less feminine, less girly, you're presenting like men with the JJs. This is why my, one of my buddies says this um, uh, trans, I don't want to use this term, but it, it, you're, not, you're not like women. You're not like females. Not feminine, yeah. yeah. The size, the attitude, and then it's like even, the, even what I'm talking about, 
if you went to a PWI and saw your non-black counterparts, they felt some kind of way when they put on some weight. Y'all don't feel no kind of way. Y'all, I need to get thicker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially me, like, growing up, I didn't I didn't grow up with a father, so I, I guess if that, that influence, I think that would have helped me. I, and this is why this is why I, this is why I cannot I can't go down that path with you. Yeah. At eighteen, you're responsible for yourself. You went to college, man. Human beings learn. There are women who did grow up with fathers and still maintain work. It's being lazy. And excuse finding. Are you are you fully employed? Yes. Have you had a full time job? for the last 36 months. Yep. Then there's absolutely no re there's no reason you can't afford a gym membership and a personal trainer. No excuses. Zero. Zip zero. Stingy with De Niro. Y'all don't want to spend the money. You don't want to put in the work. Don't want to put in the effort. Then you're upset that you can't get the outcomes and blame it on men. It's not men's fault that they don't want to marry women that are the size of men. I get lamb I get lambasted for saying that. But every time I'm out in the world, men are saying, thank you for saying this. This body positivity thing, it's not helping you guys. So if if getting fit is going to get you the outcome, here's a if you knew that getting fit would get you the outcome you want, meaning husband, marriage. Would you get fit? Absolutely. Because that's what I want. That's the outcome. But see, that's a trick question. So it means you already know and you would do it if you were guaranteed what you want. All right. Then what about the other way? I can't guarantee you it's going to get you what you want, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you this, a lower quality of life and health issues. I guarantee you this, you continue, to, it, lessens, it lessens the quality and availability of the value of your potential mate, if ever. True. So... This is why I tell all women, the one thing you can all do something with is your fitness. So without, without the fitness, there isn't a chance that, so once I get the fitness part corrected, then I'm pretty much eligible to. I don't know. See, the thing is, that's the wrong question to be asking. Without the fitness. No, nope, I can't answer that. Men want women who are fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive. You're five foot ten. You're already six inches taller than the average female, right? Right? The average female is five foot four. Yep. And you're two hundred and what? Forty, sixty. How much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? 85, 285. 285. Man, you weigh twice as much. You weigh twice as much as you should. What does your doctor say? Um, we discussed the BMI and we discussed nutrition and everything like that. But that's really what motivated me to sign up for the gym. Is your doctor a male or a female? Hello? Female. Hello? Yeah, she's a female. Female. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, now I can't. It's female. Is she married? Okay. Jesus H. Christ. I don't know if she's married. 
We never discussed that. Is she overweight? No, she's she's healthy. All right. So the simple issue is, ma'am, there's no two ways about it. At being 26 years old, there's absolutely no good reason to be almost 300 pounds. So getting going with the gym and that kind of stuff, that's fine. But, you know, I, I think it's kind of sad that we've got to a point in our community to where we're all right with letting our women We're to the point to where we've allowed our women to just do this. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm starting to have a little noise on this side. Um, I am going to have to drop this show off now. Um, let me do this. Hold on just a second. Okay. Just a second. <clears throat> All right. The second. Zip zero, stingy with De Niro. Might buy you crisp, but that about it. Might light your wrist, but that about it. Fuck it, I might wipe you and buy you nice whips. But mom, but you really got a nice, know how to work your hips and your head's priceless. Why are you popping back in there? I think I bounced you for a reason. Zip zero, stingy with De Niro. All right. Please bounce back out. Did you just come back in, Christine? All right. Let's see if that works. All right. All right. So, unmute yourself. Uh, N O N N O A. What is that? I mean, you sir. Hi. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How old are you? Can you hear me? Yep, I can. How old are you? Okay. Hi, um, I'm Imani. My in the, the I'm 25. All right. So what do you got for me? Hello. So um, I guess not as much on the topic. I don't feel tired, but I definitely. I okay, you guys are you guys are you guys are behind. So I'm going to drop that. <clears throat> yeah. Recording stop. Do 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 do. All right, so here's what's going on right now. I'm going to end this show. It's it's acting up on this side. We're having a little buffer issue. Uh, but part two, join Instagram tomorrow. We pick up the start of the, the uh, show. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish this show um, on Instagram because this whole matchmaking thing is going to be a pretty good dent gum idea, I believe. Uh, but until then, guys, I can't control the interwebs. The Internet's been having a lot of problems today between YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and everything else. So, yeah, maybe a sign from the, from the uh, broadcasting gods.
Peace. We're gone.